Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I am very excited because I'm standing by a bunch of amazing snakes. My friends, Dan and Colette, I've known for probably 25 years from the snake keepers here in Utah. We get a chance to visit their collection. It's gonna be absolutely epic. You guys, uh, buckle up, because this is gonna be an amazing vlog. All right, guys, I'm excited to jump right in. We got Colette here, we got Dan here from TSK. So uh, I, we're gonna start with green tree pythons because I was blown away by, by the green tree pythons, guys. I mean, I knew you guys had some, but when I saw this wall of green trees, I I was like, oh my gosh. So uh, where did it start? We made too much one year and we needed to invest it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Was and so green tree pythons were the way to go. I've always been fascinated by them and it's just, they're a different color palette than ball pythons. Right. And so you could have some different colors and so I said, okay, well, let's try. And so it started, did you start with the Maxwell Calico or was there something else first? We had three times as many as you see now. Really? Yes. Okay, so you guys got into it. Yeah, and then I decided that it was a bit overwhelming and so we, we cut it back. We bought Arctic Blue. Arctic Blue. And yeah. some of his offspring. And we bought this this Greg Maxwell Calico also at the same time. Right. Yeah. So the Greg Maxwell Calico, for you guys that don't know, are typically red babies, right? Yes. And then as they get older, they turn like a calico, which is that real high yellow, got some green blotching on them, stuff like that. Yeah. We have some of his babies from this year. Really? Yes, we do. And so. And you can see this guy is actually not perching right now, which happens every now and then. Typically, you see the green tree pythons on that beautiful perch. As a matter of fact, almost every other one in here does it. But every now and then, you get a goofy one that just comes down and uh, some of the offspring that you've raised up from is from this one here are some of the ones over here yeah th so these two were uh, the, the first that we we produced of course she's all about food and she has a little bit oh my gosh she is <laughs> definitely ready to eat right now she'll look at this little fuzzy and we'll be in trouble but <laughs> that one is stunning i tell you what that is crazy and so and this one had a clutch this year oh this one really so oh my gosh that is amazing now how many babies do come out red is it like predominantly red from this or it depends this this particular clutch that she laid all the all the babies were red okay and other clutches that he's sired there's been reds and yellows okay now do we know what the lineages or their locality like i know like the cyclops there's a lot of red babies but back when greg was doing it people weren't as much into the locality so no. so yeah this is kind of a generic green tree that he kind of produced and stuff like that so uh, so you obviously have the calico line which is amazing I see some blue animals that are ridiculous as well this is actually the one that turned out the bluest from Arctic blue and we have I mean some other interesting colors well she's really faded up here and what line is that one this this one has greg maxwell i was tidbit to arctic blue oh my gosh wow and i know we saw over here in these boxes these are stunning so what gosh. line is this she's in the shed this was produced from not the same clutch as ella diablo but the same pairing and so we bred two greg maxwell animals together that are actually fairly nondescript looking and we got these guys out and not to sound like an idiot here but i have no idea what ella diablo <laughs> is so so what what is that it's, El, it's ella an diablo, animal that looks a lot like this so it was the original one was kind of like this line okay gotcha right well that is that is stunning what are these babies yellow or are they, they these, these they were red, all reds all reds as well that is so crazy yeah. the female is what they call a super red so okay. all of her babies are red these and so they're it looks like like there's some pretty consistent genetics here with all of these animals that you guys produced. I mean, that is crazy. Yeah, they came out. Oh, I was pleased. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope you would be because they're absolutely incredible. That's crazy. Yeah, like That's when you find a cage and it says mine. Yes. Mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And when I say mom is fairly not, this is mom. Oh, okay. Wow. Interesting. And She's still really beautiful, but wow, is. the offspring is incredible. I'm going to say if you are going to get one of these, that would be the one I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like those. You like those? Oh, wait a second here. Well, uh, Dan, who's the business person I need to talk to about this? Because I get the, whenever I get the green light, to buy something i'm i'm in man now I, jay you heard it right? i heard it here first and it's on the vlog yeah, so. it's on the vlog so you guys know i'm holding her to it no i do love those those are absolutely beautiful so uh that is awesome and and listen i'm going to put a link in the description to all their social media their website everything like that you can check out certainly green tree pythons are just a touch of what they do they obviously have a really great supply company uh boas ball pythons colubrid so we're going to dove into uh i think ball pythons right now because they were the pioneer of some of the most probably iconic ball pythons still in the 
industry today. And really when I met Dan and Colette, you guys were really all about ball pythons like uh, we were. I mean, we were in the early days of pioneering ball pythons and these guys were one of the big names in that world as well. And I remember kind of your biggest first hit was uh, the Mojave stuff. I mean, like you guys, when Mojave's came out, that was like revolutionary. It was yes. like, it was the top, I don't know, maybe five, six mutations that were ever yeah, proved but, out. Yeah. yeah. It was really early days, so you guys appreciate it. Mojave was because you guys lived near the Mojave Desert at right. the time, right. right? I remember that story. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a naming contest. There was like three suggestions. Well, that was a consistent theme. There was a desert theme, a cat theme, and, and a cloud type theme. And since we lived in the Mojave Desert, we went with the oh desert type gosh. theme. That's crazy. You know, I actually, that's the first time I've heard that story. So that is, that's actually, that's pretty really awesome. Now, we're, we're all learning here today. We're all learning here. So, uh, so that wasn't it. I mean, I know another animal that was near and dear to me. I mean, I love them to death. And Lori's going to let me buy a bunch from you guys is, uh, is tri stripes, right? Oh, can we look at, do you guys have some tri stripes we can look at? Well, we have just right here, oh. actually, we have, this is an albino tri -stripe. Stripe. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And he shed for you, so that makes yeah, it nice. nice and fresh and beautiful. And the tri stripe is, uh, again, it's got three stripes one big bold stripe and then a couple side stripes, uh, and it is a recessive mutation. Yeah, so it's this, hard to see on the albinos. Yeah, it's a little harder to see on albinos, but still, absolutely. When we see some normals, you guys are going to love them, but again, it's a recessive mutation. That would be a double recessive, of course. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Is this a lavender? Yeah, this is the lavender tri stripe, wow. and you can see you've got this one here, this one here, and this one back here on the other side. Oh my gosh, that, Laura, you gotta say, that's pretty, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lori isn't as excited as I am about this, but uh, I think her, I think she's calming her, her excitement down so they don't buy a bunch of them or something like that. But uh, let's take a look at a normal tri-stripe right that, here. It's really beautiful. Look at that. I mean, now that pretty much is the reason why they're called tri-stripes. One, two, three, beautiful stripes. Where did you guys, did you guys import this or is it something that you bought? We bought the original one from Stefan. Oh, over in Germany? Uh -huh. Okay, interesting. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Well, and it sat on the shelf for a long time. Yeah, because we didn't think it would prove out. We thought the coffee would prove out, which oh, we still own. that's owned. right. And this proved out and the coffee didn't. Exactly. We should show crazy. the coffee. Oh my gosh. Do you have a, you have a banana tri-stripe though, right? Yes, we oh, do. Oh, got to see that. I mean, this is this is one I'm excited about. I don't know how awesome they look, but oh, I think it's incredible. Are you kidding me? I think that's amazing. So, so, th so this one has like the dashes on it instead, instead of, of the solid stripes. stripes. Yeah, Gosh, that's, I think it's awesome, right? That's yeah, pretty that cool. is pretty cool. Yeah, I got to imagine as a baby, that is absolutely a stunning animal. I mean, that's, yeah. that's insane. Yeah, they're pretty nice. They started their own axanthic line as well. So there's a few different lines of axanthics. And uh, I think that in my opinion, like the Southern line and the VPI line almost look exactly the same, right? I mean, they're, they're almost they're identical. Yeah. yeah, they're very identical, and but they're not compatible, which is kind of weird. That's for sure. And then you produce the first right. clown pies. Let's back in 2008. 2008. Doesn't seem that long ago, but that, I was like, oh my gosh, that thing is gorgeous. Wow, that is pretty. Wow, that is awesome. Holy moly. It's just amazing how far this whole thing has come, you know? And, and I love uh, visiting with old friends that kind of, you know, started, you know, pioneering the ball python community. So it's really cool to see where a lot of this stuff came from right here. So that's absolutely amazing. And you talked about the Mojave and the Asiatic. Yes. We do happen to have a combination of both. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. that's beautiful. Is that cool? Wow, that one is really neat. Wow, that's that's absolutely incredible. So again, the Mojave is a co-dominant mutation bred together as a blue-eyed leucistic complex. And then of course the Azanthic is uh, a recessive mutation together. Stunning. And another really major like game changer, to be honest with you, was uh, the first ivory ball pythons. Right. Now you have to remember back in the day, like the holy grail of ball pythons was a White leucistic snake. snake. Right. And you guys produced the first ones, which is crazy. So uh, again, you know, they're, they're more common now but still being able to see where it all came from is pretty awesome and uh, again you got to realize that back then the first white ball python it was uh, like the buzz of the entire community so it's just, it's absolutely pretty cool so this is two, from 2007 2007 look at that still a stunning snake I tell you what I don't care how many are produced these days that is still an animal that is absolutely amazing and it's really weird with ball pythons how it was the holy grail and then shortly after the first ivories were produced then there were blue-eyed leucistics of course with the mojaves and lessers and, and now there's all kinds of white snakes but uh, uh the first ivories white snakes produced at tsk 
I swear, jumps on the bed, mm -hmm. right? Just jumps on the bed, and I'm like, what? I just got to bed. You know, it's probably, what, seven in the morning, eight in the morning? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she goes, we hatched a white snake. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean we hatched a white snake? <laughs> Get up, run out there. There it is. And let me ask you, I mean, with, uh, you know, we knew the yellow belly was at least, you know, producing either dominant and complete dominant, yeah, Su super. Did you guys have any idea that there might be a white snake or do you think no. it was just gonna be something a little bit I don't. Even, we didn't even know that the yellow belly was the same thing at the time, did we? We, we, we didn't know that Florida had what we had. No, we, we didn't know that. Okay, oh, so you, you didn't realize that it was a yellow belly. We knew that there were yellow belly. The term yellow belly, you flip it over yes. and, and you expect to see a yellow, a yellow belly. belly. Right. Yeah. And that was not the case. Wow. So, gosh, I tell you as, soon as, as soon as it was hatched, and yes. then I think it was probably a mirror, somebody that saw what we had, yeah. then they all went, oh, there's a million of these down here in Florida. Yeah. And we didn't even know. Right. And literally the price went from, I think they were like $1,000 to $15,000 like overnight. I love the history. I love the history of it. It's awesome. Just wrapping up here at TSK. It is always great to catch up to old friends, see amazing snakes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Comment down below at the animals you like the best. As for now, I'm heading back over to Sequest. We've got a couple meet and greets. Going to have a really good time tonight. So what do you say we hit the road, get back to Sequest. Here for my meet and greet. First off, person I've ran into is Ivan here. How are you? Good. Good. You excited? You having a good time? Have you been here before? No. Oh my gosh. You're going to walk around and see some stuff? Oh my awesome. Probably. Awesome. Good job. We'll have, a, we'll have a fun time tonight. Okay. So we're just getting started with our meet and greet. What's up, buddy? I, I keep seeing your YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So you made this? I did, it took me two years. Two years? Oh my gosh, this is, this is so, I, I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, that's a lot of time. It is so awesome. I oh my gosh. started maybe mostly when I was pregnant with this little one. Oh my gosh, well thank you so much. And I finished at one o'clock last night. Oh my gosh, just last night? Oh my God, I love it. How awesome is that? You're the best. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And the meet and greet's over. I had an absolutely incredible time. Uh, it was like four and a half hours of meeting people. Absolutely incredible. And that is going to conclude uh, this portion of the vlog. I hope that you guys have an amazing day and enjoyed it. I love your beautiful faces. Be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah.